buying pay-per-views on nordvpn.com slash fightful is going to enhance your pay-per-view buying process now one subscription to nordvpn has so many different benefits but if you're a big pay-per-view buyer like myself ufc boxing pro wrestling all that good stuff in <laughs> any combination of the three if they're doing a fight circus or something like that this subscription will pay for itself after one or two pay-per-view buys change your virtual location pay for it at the prices that other people are paying for it in the uk in australia etc etc and you can get different interfaces. Maybe you don't like Peacock and you want to check out the WWE Network the way that it used to be, the way that it was designed to be, the easy navigation, so on and so forth. Maybe you want to watch AEW without commercials. Maybe there's some other overseas services that you can't subscribe to and you want access to them. NordVPN.com slash Fightful gives you that with a great deal and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Even better, 24-7 tech support. So if you have trouble navigating any of it, they can help you out. Fastest VPN on the planet, nordvpn.com slash Fightful. What's up, you guys? Sean Ross Sapp, Fightful, here with a name you know. Man, wh where don't you know him? Been, been <laughs> a, a face of New Japan Pro Wrestling for over a decade at this point, and October 28th at Sam's Town Live in Las Vegas, Nevada at Fighting Spirit Unleashed. Never open weight championship against Shingo Takagi. We got Tama Tonga. How you feeling, man? Oh, feeling great, man. Sean, thank you. Good to see you again, my friend. Thank you for having me here. You. I'm really excited for this match. Really excited. I, I just love the expansion that New Japan's had into America. And it's it was very clear, like even before like Styles and Nakamura left, or even before the elite left, there were plans for that US expansion. Like they were like regardless of if those guys are here or not, we're confident in what we have. And we've seen it with like the strong brand. We've seen it with the shows that you all are doing all across America. What's that been like for you doing, doing more shows stateside? Oh, it's been great, man. It, you know, I'm with you. Absolutely. They've been, been, they've had this game plan since before all those guys. And uh, I've watched it, you know, like you said, I've been with them for over a decade and I've seen everything that they've, they've been doing. And, and it's great. I'm glad that we're, you know, I know, in the past what two three years things have been kind of slow with the pandemic but now we're you know back on on course and, and moving forward and i love it and you guys are doing such a great job and, and what i love is these these are special events and the talent that that are on these show shows it's not just new japan like you'll see aew talent pop up oh yeah you'll see impact talent pop up what's that been like for you as well getting to mix it up with some of those guys which new japan has always worked worked well with others Oh yeah, absolutely. That's what I like, man. New Japan working well with others. We we always been team players, and and I love the fact that they know coming to the states, this is not their territory. And hey, you know, this is other people's, and let's we like to play nice with everybody. Just like when they come to to Japan, hit us up. We'll play nice with everybody. We like we're, we're good dudes, right? New Japan are good yeah. guys. <laughs> we we've seen that in the past, like. Uh, AEW and and New Japan, obviously with Forbidden Door, is that something that we we're, we're going to see you do? I mean, it's been kind of noticeable that you haven't necessarily been over there. Like it's <laughs> it's something that I look at and I'm like, I'm like, okay, there's got to be we, a reason behind this. There's that's not an we, accident. Oh, uh, we we going straight into it, huh, Sean? Damn. Yeah. Okay. Why not? Why not? <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. You look look. It is obvious and. Right now, the, the focus has, has always been right now with me, with New Japan, and getting us to America. And, right, I mean, we've, we've got other guys that were ahead of me doing the leg work, and, like, Will Ospreay, you know, uh, Zack Sabre. They, these guys, they, they, they love the crossover. Everybody knows that I'm, I'm a New Japan guy. I've always been committed to New Japan first and foremost. So, but, you know, here we are. Here, this is a new stage. We're doing new things, and, you know, I don't want to give out too much, but there's there's definitely you know a future there. All right, I don't want we yeah. don't want to like shoot all our bullets all at once, Sean. Okay, sure. Like we gotta, we, you know, New Japan plays the long game, and so do I. Two of my favorite matches of yours that I've and again I've been watching you for over a decade at this point. Last year, Ishii Okada, like that's and and that, those weren't that far apart from each other. I feel like they were like three weeks apart. Oh yeah. What does it What does it feel like when you are on an in ring role like that, and you're just like, well, 
this is clicking pretty well. Yeah. So, yeah, obviously, obviously they're in a uh, different level, and to get up to that level, especially with Okada, it's just I mean, that man is so is, is a genius in the ring, and just to to get in and tangle with him, I've I've learned a lot, and it, everybody already knows about Ishii. You know, there's no doubt that he's he's done this for a very long time at a high caliber. So I'm only learning, you know, and no matter how long I've been in this game, I'm learning and, and, and I'll, I'll always be a, a student of the game, a student of these guys that have proven themselves over and over again. So uh, I'm just lucky to be in there and, and learn from, from these great, you know, uh, athletes, wrestlers. Speaking of people that you have great chemistry with, uh, yourself and your brother, and the Briscoes, God rest his soul, Jay Briscoe, two of the best tag team matches I ever saw in my life, again, happened almost back to back. It was the ladder war and the street fight. And again, like those were so special. And I really also felt like, I think those were very, very important to New Japan and ROH too, because AEW was emerging on the scene mm -hmm. and you guys were sort of planting a flag saying, no, we we've, look, look at what we got right here as well. How did that feel, man? Because those were both really man, special it, matches. Man, you you really just uh, gave me chills uh, <laughs> talking about that. But um, those guys pushed us to to really uh, redefine ourselves. Because you know, when you're in Japan, you're used to a certain style. But going against those guys, I felt like they pushed us to to uh, like do new things, bring out new attitude. And they were like, I always tell this to everybody. They were like the, the redneck American rednecks. And we were like the, like the, the Polynesian, like, like wild, wild guys still. And then we could just mix it, mix it really well with each other. And, um, we, we always brought it everything in that ring, man. And probably one of my best, best memories that I've had in, in the ring at tag team wise. I just remember as I watched both of those, I was like, man, this is, this is special chemistry. Like this, yeah. is, it's next level chemistry. And especially in those types of matches, so much can go wrong. Right. And yeah. and it all clicked for you guys. Yeah. It clicked, man. Even uh, well, I'll say this right now, even if it went wrong, you couldn't tell because like it, it felt right, you know? So like everything was just natural. That's how I'll explain it. It's just organic. And, we were in there to compete. We were in there to talk shit. We were in there to like fight. And their attitude messed really well with ours, especially at that time. So you got Takagi coming up uh, in Las Vegas. Now this is pretty fresh off of you becoming the never open weight champion, beating down David Finley, taking that title from him. Your first title defense. How, how are the thoughts? How are the feelings going into this? Going from, from really one type of performer to a completely different, even though they, they sure share, share some similarities competitively. Yeah. Like, like you said, they're, they're different kind of uh, styles here and one very experienced one fairly newer. Um, and I, I just have to adapt always to the situation, to the, to the, to the type of wrestlers that I'm wrestling and Shingo. Uh, look, that's, that's, uh, IW, a former IWGP heavyweight champion, you know, and, and he's what a two time, uh, never open weight champion. Yeah. I, I can't, I've always got to like, uh, come prepared. I can't look past anything. I've always got to check, you know, uh, check everything really. He's just one of those guys that my gosh, I like, I, I'm not going to lie to you. My training today, I put myself through the ringer just trying to get my cardio up because I know that guy can can really go the distance. And he's proven it over and over again. So my fighting style has to evolve to his, and I'm trying to match his. And that's, uh, my gosh, past three, four weeks, all I've been thinking about him and how to adjust to his fighting style. And I, I got, that's it, man. And one of the things I love about these cards is we're going to see – New Japan, marquee mainstays like yourself and Shingo Takagi. But also, we're going to see a guy like Fred Rosser who completely reinvented his career, his life, everything. I remember in 2019, I did an interview with him, and I'm like, you going to wrestle, like, again? And he's like, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm biding my time. And at the time, of course, I'm like, sure thing, pal. I had no clue 
no clue what was in store. Like when you see people like that reinvent themselves, what does that say to you about that that New Japan brand and the opportunity that the states sort of provides for them? That that's New Japan, man. You know, is is learning patience. And first of all, you got to get that foot in. Once you get that foot in, and and it's really the rest is up to you. And there's a lot of like hurry up and wait type situations. <laughs> And he's been there, but he's proven himself. Everything that that's been like, put in his path, he's overcome it, and just he keeps moving forward. And that's what I love uh, about Fred, man, is that he he's not gonna take no days off, man. All right, he's just gonna keep moving forward. I love that. It's that grit, that grit attitude. So you know, a lot has been made of Bullet Club Civil War over the last few years, and I remember like the offshoots. The breakaways, everything a Bullet Club is one of the most fascinating things to me. And you are, I mean, you have as much say as anybody. If you just decided tomorrow, well, we're Bullet Club something else. What are they going to do? Say no? You invented it. You invented it. But Adam Cole once told me that he doesn't want Bullet Club Civil War. If a, if an ultimate forbidden door show happened, he said he wants a Bullet Club group hug where everybody <laughs> finally comes together, beats down everybody else, and all 42 of you hug. Is there any possibility of... Absolutely. Of, that's what I want, damn it. Absolutely. You know, like, there has been so much drama and turmoil within Bullet Club that I think we've given people that. And I think for once, we could give them... Uh, let's bring it all together. Care Bear hug it. And move forward. <laughs> Who's gonna stop you? If if all of if every Tongan in wrestling history, and then Cody Rhodes, AJ Styles, Finn Bal, what are they gonna do? What's gonna happen? <laughs> the greatest faction in the whole entire exactly. wrestling industry, man. <laughs> I'm I'm interested to learn this because you know, Jay White, who you know you, you've had your issues with in the past, uh -huh. he had said that he does consider WWE's OC like bullet club like he considers uh -huh. them that even though they can't legally say it do you consider them bullet club hey, look i'm i'm <laughs> oh hey, hey 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 look look here. <laughs> look i'm not part of bullet club anymore so i'm not gonna say anything you've all right? got as much of a right as anybody you're a hey, but hey i'm god i'm outside i am new japan what as Hey, ask me something about New Japan. I'll tell you who's got a right or not. What? But Bullet Club, I think you should ask David Finley that. What, huh? Scott Demore? Because he never <laughs> left. I got to ask Scott <laughs> Demore. Scott Demore, baby. Hey, he's still, he's still Bullet Club. Nobody kicked him out, right? <laughs> My God. My God. So, uh, you know, I got I to gotta at least ask you. I heard that about nine, ten months ago from people in WWE, they're like, you know, We'd love to have that Tama Tonga guy. In fact, we'd love to have all of them, to be honest with you. Um, there was reportedly a hiring freeze there. There were reports you were working without a contract. Is there anything you can, is there any light you can shed besides that you smile? son of a bitch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. But you, man, you started off shooting just, Unloading all the bullets. Okay. I've had uh, these questions for like 10 <laughs> months, man. All right. Okay. Yes. Um, I, I was in talk to them and uh, very much interest in myself and both my brothers. Um, but uh, out of uh, respect for New Japan, I have to always give them the, uh, you know, I always got to give them the doors first and to see what they can do and yes there was a period of about uh a few months of myself working without a contract just to give new japan a chance and um you know that look i know in this game it, it can get uh messy with with contracts and and the way we're talking right now but i was sure. uh, raised by uh my father on on the on a way to to go about business and uh, treat, you know, loyalty and respect to those that have, you know, put me through the door. So uh, New Japan first and foremost. But, yes, there was talks with, with WWE. Um, I don't know, you know, I don't know anything about the hiring freeze. 
I don't understand. I, I didn't know, but I ended up choosing New Japan uh, at the end, and here we are. And I, I can say this. I mean, I spoke to people in New Japan, and they <laughs> not not only were they like, well, it would suck immensely to lose those guys. They spoke about the loyalty you had in 2016 as well, mm-hmm. when a whole lot of people hit the bricks, and they're like, he probably could have left then if he wanted to uh, as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that that speaks volumes of you. And not only that, but uh, the way that you you approach your career and all that. I mean, obviously, that is something that paid off for you because, mm-hmm. listen, I, I love my dudes. Oh, we lost you for a second. Oh, I, I heard you. <laughs> I love my dudes Gallows and Anderson, but they, they had a rocky road to get back to WWE. Uh, yeah. Your loyalty seems to have paid off an awful lot in New Japan. Yeah, um, thank goodness. And, and <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, because you never know these days. The game has changed so much. The, the, the environment, the community, everything has changed. And you don't know, um, you know, you don't know what from who. So just, you know, just doing everything that I was taught um, and, and moving forward from there. And that's it. I. I was always taught to do good business, man, and and stick with your gut and do good business. That's it. Speaking of good business, how do you feel about El Fantasmo joining you guys? Absolutely love it. He's you know wonderful. it's his birthday today? Hey. Is it? Happy, happy birthday, ELP. <laughs> happy <laughs> birthday. He wanted us to kayfabe that, you know, uh, last year. Mm. So I don't know if it was the same this year, but it's his birthday. So if y'all see him, say what's up, man. But I absolutely love that 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 dude. He's a he's a, a phenomenal talent, great wrestler, and hell of a the funniest dude I've I've met. <laughs> like him and Hikaleo teaming up has been just such a pleasure. <laughs> like it's just been great. <laughs> right? It's not something I expected at all originally. <laughs> It's hey, so they're they're trying to uh, uh think of a new name, a new tag team name. They've been putting it out and okay, you know, uh with ELP dying his hair pink and he grew low with his size. I was thinking, I've been shooting this idea, and I think it's I think it's money. What do you think of Pinky and the Braun? That I like that. I like that. <laughs> Shot, you weren't too sure. I could tell you were like, uh, uh. I thought about it and I was like, you know what? Y- you're in Japan. You can get away with it. They're not coming right. after copyright over there. Hey, Pinky and the Braun, you got, you got merch. You know, we're playing off here. Let's come on, merch, baby. We got to oh think about money. Oh, my God. <laughs> do, do you still get Bullet Club residuals? Hell no. I'm out. Oh, <laughs> oh. I'm I'm oh my done. God. Even Road Dog still gets the oh, DX residual. Shit. Oh, what the hell? Don't tell me that, man. I'm pretty sure Billy Gunn is in AEW and he still gets DX residuals. Damn. You got Damn. Midian getting a paycheck off of like uh, some ministry <laughs> stuff, probably. <laughs> Damn, man. Uh, Who? So uh, obviously. Funny. New Japan has expanded into the States. It's gone incredibly well. Is there anywhere in the States that maybe that they haven't been that you look at and you're like, man, I'd love to hit up that market. I'd love to do that. Oh, probably. Like, you know, they've hit pretty much the, the, the major spots that I like Chicago, New York. Uh, I know they're uh, tech. They've done Texas before. I, at least uh, Cali. I, I don't. I don't. I can't think of any like. I mean, Philly too. You know. Yeah. The, so, uh, really, I just want to go back to New York. I think that's like that's mm-hmm. the spot. New York and Philly, East Coast, and maybe Chicago. You know, I where, I don't know. Where any are you other, based other out spots. of now? Where are you based um, out of now? Florida. Man, and you've you've wrestled like one match in the states in like a year, haven't you? <laughs> This will be keep like, it that way. All right? Oh my god! <laughs> you know, well, we saw you do some impact stuff a while back. What do you think about them reach or changing their name back to TNA? I like it. I love it. Me too. Yeah, you know why not? Yeah, you know, it's cool. I grew up. It's... I grew up adoring TNA. Like I love me too. That. Me too. I I love. That's why I started off watching, and and I I love it. You know, especially you know, to be honest with you, when I started off wrestling, um. I was in Puerto Rico doing indies, and I just I rem- I'll never forget it. I was watching Impact or TNA, and <laughs> I watching I was watching Motor City versus the Young Bucks, 
And oh, incredible. I, I, yeah, incredible. I was like, oh my gosh, that's the, I, I'll never forget that. I love that. I love it. Yeah. I love TNA. What was your experience there like? I mean, it seemed like everybody pretty well got along, had a good time, but for a long time, that New Japan Impact TNA relationship wasn't so hot, and now it looks like it's doing great. Yeah, I, I don't know what it was before because I, I was never there, but my uh, experience and just with everybody uh, last time I went was awesome. I, it's a whole different crew. I, everybody's super cool. Davey Boy Jr. told me that when he asked to work Impact, they're like, no, Jeff Jarrett screwed us. And he was like, that was like four regimes ago. <laughs> he left and came back since then. <laughs> look, look, the Japanese don't forget, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's, you know, the business, the way they treat business is different. And I like, you know, kind of just go back to what we were talking about before. My, my pop grew up in the Japanese business. You know, he started in Japanese wrestling. So what he taught me was like, hey, you know, good business and loyalty means a lot in this game. You know, and that, that's New Japan, Japanese wrestling is old school loyalty. You know, I, I feel like a lot of the wrestling nowadays is like, it's like you know, that, that fast ass wrestling. That's what I call it, fast ass wrestling. And everybody wants a piece of New Japan. Like everybody, MLW is doing stuff with New Japan now, for the love of God. They they announced a partnership. <laughs> they say Every, for the love of God. Why you got this? Hey, we say it like that. Man. Everybody. <laughs> like this would not hey. have happened 10, like 10, 15 years ago. Why you say every, like you ain't got no love for MLW, man? <laughs> no, I love it. I do. They they put my name on one of their gravestones at uh, their MLW show. They're like, here lies Sean Ross Sapp. And I was like, come on. <laughs> but like 15 years ago, to see the possibility of like, oh, here's CMLL, New Japan, TNA Impact, MLW, and AEW, and they're all connected by this one web whose name is Rocky Romero. Uh, <laughs> like that, that was, wouldn't have happened. And now I look at it and I'm like, there's a real possibility that there's like a five promotion show in the future. That's insane to think about. It's great. It's a great time. Yeah. You know, with everything that's happening in wrestling uh, nowadays, it's a great time to 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 have that. It's it's a perfect time. You, you know, especially when New Japan trying to come up to this new market out here in America. Why not? Why not have as many you know ma many partnerships as you can to you know introduce yourself to a new market? Yeah. So this card that we got at Fighting Spirit Unleashed, in addition to yourself, in addition to Takagi. Uh, Eddie Kingston in action. You got Sonata in action. Hiromu Takahashi, uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi, uh, Mystico. So many names on this show that are just so killer. Uh, your, your brother as well. Uh, taking on Lance uh, Archer and Alex Zane. I'm, I'm very excited for that. I think I think Archer and Zane are a great combo as well. Uh, I like them. Uh, Alex Zane, a Lexington boy from here in Kentucky. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. I'm going to have the sauce God. I like him. I like he him. Is. A lot. Yeah. He's, he's, man, he's big into Taco Bell, too. I don't know how he can eat Taco Bell and look like he does. It's unreal. <laughs> look, they, uh, in Japan, I think Taco Bell even like sponsored him, uh, while he was there. I, I don't know they the should. extent of it, but I know they, they love him out there. <laughs> they, I think they follow him on Twitter or X. They I should. should say. Yeah. X. My God. Well, tell the people where they can find you on social media. Of course, they can come see you this Saturday, October 28th, Samstown Live, Las Vegas, a fighting spirit unleashed. That's right. Uh, you can find me on X at one Tamatonga at one Tamatonga or uh, on Instagram at, uh, at BB, uh, the good bad. I don't know my own damn name. All right. On Instagram, on <laughs> the good bad guy, Tamatonga. Facebook, find me on Tamatonga. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, did some legwork on, on, on social media, y'all. Yeah. Come on. Tama Tonga, thank you so much. They said, Sean Ross Sapp, who do you want? And I said, Tama Tonga, please. And, and they delivered. Look at that. They delivered. You're the man, Tama. Sean. I like you. I knew I liked you, man. <laughs> See? I appreciate you so much. Guys, check out the show this weekend, Fighting Spirit Unleashed. They always put on a dope show. Until next time, we're out.